This is Apostle Charlie Reddish, Life Changes Covenant Ministries, 2140 Illinois Drive, North Charleston, South Carolina. We are getting ready to feast on the word of the Lord. Amen. So get your Bibles, get anything and everything that you're going to need, and let's get ready to eat. Let's get ready to eat the word of God. Feasting at the table of the Lord. The best table to be at is the table of the Lord. So get your Bibles, get your iPads, get your iPods, get your computer, and let's get ready to feast on the word of God. And the scriptures always tells us that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So let's get ready. I'll be reading today from the book of first, uh, no, first, <laughs> Galatians. I'll be reading from the book of Galatians, chapters 1, 2 through 3. The book of Galatians, chapter 1 through 3. So let's get ready to dig in and eat the word of the Lord this morning. God bless you. Good morning to you, all of you. Galatians chapter 1, commencing at verse 1. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised them from the dead, and all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia, Grace be to you and peace from God the Father, from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. For you've heard of my conversations in the past, in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous, zealous of the traditions of my fathers. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood, neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again into Damascus. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. But of other of the apostles saw I none, save James, the Lord's brother. Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God I lie not. Afterwards, I came into the regions of Syria and Cilicia and was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea which were in Christ. But they had heard only that he which persecuted us in time past now preaches the faith which once he destroyed, and they glorified God in me. Galatians chapter 2, commencing at verse 1. Then fourteen years after I went up again to Jerusalem, with Barnabas, and took Titus with me also. And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preached among the Gentiles, 
but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. And that because of false brethren, unawares brought in, who came in privately to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. To whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. But of these who seem to be somewhat, whatsoever they were, it maketh no matter to me. God accepted no man's person. For they who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. But contrary wise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter, for he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mightily in me toward the Gentiles. And when James and Cephas and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me Barnabas, the right hands of fellowship, that we should go unto the heathen, and they unto the circumcision. Only they would that we should remember the poor, the same which I also was forward to do. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face, because he was to be blamed. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, if thou, being a Jew, liveth after the manner of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? We who are Jews by nature, and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ. And not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness comes by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Galatians chapter 3, commencing at verse 1. O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth, crucified among you? This only would I learn of you. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Are ye also, are ye also foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain? If it be yet in vain, he therefore that, rem that ministered to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, doeth it, he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, Indeed shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faith for Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Curse is every one that continues not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident. 
for the just shall live by faith. And the Lord is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Curse is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men. Though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannul or addeth thereto. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He say not and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed which is Christ. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ the law, which were 430 years after, cannot disannul, that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more promise. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions, to the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now, a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the Lord then against the promise of God? God forget, forbid. For if had, there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our school schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither bond nor free. There's neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and ears according to the promise. Thus I have read Galatians chapter 1 two, and three. Thank God for your tuning in. I pray that you heard something that will help you in your walk with God today, that, that will bring you to a new place in your faith and strengthen you by the word of God. As you continue to live, let's continue to stay in the word, for in the word is life, and his, his word is spirit, and his word is life. And man shall not live by bread alone. Amen. So we thank you for tuning in. And until the next time, I want you to know that Jesus loves you. I love you. And may God richly bless you is my prayers. And remember this, don't call it the way you see it. Call it the way you want it to be. God bless you.